Hey, good morning to everybody. Happy Friday. It's Daryl here. It's bright and freaking early, man. You know it. It's 3.30 a.m. here in Connecticut on the East Coast. Okay, it was the usual morning. I've been up for an hour and a half now. I was looking through the news stories. I usually don't look at anything but the news stories before I do a video. I don't want to get distracted. I don't look at the comments from old videos. I don't look at the likes. I don't look at the views or any of that. Today I did. Today I went back and I looked at the views for the last week or so. And uh, I had to ask myself the question. Uh, am I going to do the same thing today and get the same results? Or am I just going to try something different and just do what I want to do and talk about what's in my heart? And that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to talk about what's in my heart. Uh, I thought about one of the most interesting things. You know, all my videos are about being the joy, the uh, getting my soul back. Getting that that sum that sums up this video. Getting my soul back. Let me talk about that first. Uh, and then I'm going to talk about one of the first times I ever did lysergic acid diethylamide or LSD, and some of the things that happened. And it, 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 some of the stuff is just is unbelievable. I, I I remember this from it was about four. It was forty years ago, and I still remember it. And I don't want, when I, when I tell you these things, it, some of it sounds incredible and amazing, but there's a reason I'm telling you this too. And it, it's, it's a warning. It's definitely a warning. Okay, before I start talking about that though, um, sometimes on here, I'm hesitant to talk about, you know, you guys can tell that I believe in God. You know, without a doubt, I believe I have a soul. Um, you know, I don't talk about it a lot because I don't feel comfortable pushing my views on other people. I don't feel... A lot of Christians feel like they have to, it's, it's, it's part of their job to convert others, to bring others into the faith. And, you know, and maybe, I, I don't know if, you know, I'm going to get, if I'm doing the wrong thing here, but I just, I, can't, I don't, I, it's, I don't feel comfortable doing that. I believe what I believe and you're going to believe what you believe. And I'm sure you probably picked up before that I, I, I have faith and there's a reason for that. And I'm going to tell you one of the biggest reasons, really, since I've been clean and sober, and this is, I know it sounds, you know, I know it sounds corny, but I feel like I have, I, I know, I, I don't just feel like, I know I have my soul back, you know, and a lot of people might not believe in the soul or, or that. Uh, I've talked about inter, the show Intervention before, right? There's, there's hundreds of episodes. If you watch any of those shows, any of those episodes, and at the end, when there's a successful intervention in the person, they, they show the person after 90 days. I want you to look at that. And it, it's, it's, it's mind-blowing. What the person, you, if you look at that person after 90 days of being clean and sober, they always gain weight. I, I, I had gained a lot of weight. That's not what I'm talking about, though. You look at their face, and they are unrecognizable. Their eyes, their face, their... And, what it is, what I know it is, is their soul. They have their souls back. It's not just their their eyes are clear. You know, it's not just their attitude. They have their souls back. I know because I, I know that I have my soul back. You know, you look at people that are in recovery, you know, like I, I tell you guys, I, I'm happy every day. Um, and this is one of the reasons, and I don't talk about it a lot. And you have to go through it to really understand it. But if you look at you look at people that are in drug addiction, you know you you think it's just because they're buzzed or because they're tired or you know the, the effects of the drugs. But that I really now I know is their soul. I don't know where it goes, but it, it was they didn't have it. And when I got clean and sober. I got my soul back, and that's and I know, I'm sure of this. I I feel corny just saying this. You know, it's it's something I never talked about to anyone before, but I know it's the truth. You know, and and you can see this. Like I said, you can see what I'm talking about. If you look, go to show intervention, I'm not trying to hype the show intervention or anything, but this is a, you can see it clear and clear as day. And it's not just one episode; it's almost every episode. After 90 days, the person looks, they're, they're unrecognizable from what, what they were to what they are after 90 days clean. And, and it's more than just the eyes and the face or the attitude. It's, it's their soul. They have a soul back. Okay, after I said that. Now, one of the first times that I tripped, some weird, weird stuff happened. And I'm not telling you guys this, to, trying to, uh, it's a warning. I'm not trying to glamorize drugs or anything. <laughs> um... I actually did a term paper. I was in advanced courses in high school, believe it or not. 
I never failed a course in high school. I actually was in accelerated courses. And I had a, a course called behavioral studies. And I did a 20-page term paper. This was when I was a senior in high school on lysergic acid diethylamide or LSD, a 20-page term paper. And I learned some of this stuff. You know, And it, believe it or not, I hate to say this, but it was kind of like a guideline for when I took acid later in my life, a year or two later. I have not touched any of the... I haven't touched hallucinogens in four, like a, a little less than 40 years. And I would never touch them. Never again, because they're just way too strong. I'm going to tell you about some of the things that happened that day. Uh, I was probably around 18 or 19 years old. And there was, four, we, we, I had met myself and three other good friends, like best friends that we hung out with. And it was a, we were a weird group because there was like one person was kind of like the uh, poindexter. Uh, I was the burnout and uh, there was the jock and then there was the artistic guy and we were all different and we all kind of started experimenting with drugs, you know, and we weren't really the drug type, but we started getting into it and we decided to do try tripping one day and we bought blotter these are little squares and uh the first time we took them i don't know if they were old or whatever but nothing happened you know we bought these little squares we each put them on our tongue and nothing happened the next time we bought two and it was a different kind and this was this was a big mistake because it was so much more potent than the first batch was that we took you know, this is this is one of the things that can happen with drugs. They're not they're not regulated at all. The first one I took, I, it was probably had been around for years. The second one I took was probably fresh from wherever they make this stuff. And uh, I wasn't normal. I thought I thought I had gone insane. I really did. I wasn't. I I didn't feel normal for days uh, tripping. And I tell you guys some of the stuff that happened. Uh, it started off good. The four of us going to the park that day. Uh, I, I, I can't believe we're actually driving a car. Uh, you know, they talk about trails, how you see trails. Like if you go like this, you see a series of hands. When things move, you see them smudge. You hear, I can't believe I'm saying this, but you, you hear sounds. You, you see, you know, you see, you see, you see sounds. You see the sound waves. Um, I've smelled colors before. I remember looking at moss at the park and it was it was the greenest green I had ever seen and it was just it, I mean I had never seen this color before and it had a scent to it I mean I did, it wasn't sticking my face into the, the the moss or anything but the green had a smell to it even saying this now sounds bizarre now, this is one of the things as the night went on it, it went from a sunny day and then it got to like you know dusk around four or five in the afternoon, it started getting dark, and it, our attitudes changed with the, the the light going away. And we drove up to a ski mountain, not far from here, uh, Mohawk Ski Mountain in Connecticut. And uh, one of my friends, he just stopped talking, and the artistic guy, and uh, he stopped talking, and we all started getting nervous. He, he, I mean, we looked at it, we we were looking at him. He was in the back seat, and. You could see a look of panic on his face just sitting there and he wouldn't say a word. And, you know, and 30 minutes went by, an hour went by and it just it looked like he couldn't talk. Like, you know, nothing would come out of his mouth. And uh, once we got to the ski area, it was dark out. It was in the middle of the night. There was no there's no lights out. And he jumped out of the car and he ran into the woods. Uh, it took us hours to find him. We found him wandering down the road a couple hours later. Here's the weird thing. Ever since that, I haven't talked to him in years, but ever since that night, he, he completely changed. His personality completely changed. You know, he was into art and athletics. After that night, he became, I swear to God, he became a born again Christian. He's, I've never heard what happened that night or what happened in those woods, but this today he's a preacher with five kids, a born again preacher today. And it all changed on that day that we tripped. He, he became a totally different person. And I have no idea why, I swear on the Bible. When I got home that night, my mind was going so fast. And I remember writing in, you know, writing this term paper that about bad trips, you have to keep your mind occupied. 
And I understood this once, you know, I took this drug, I understood what they were saying because your mind gets overactive. And I, I can't even relate to you what I mean, but I was laying in bed and I knew that I had to think of something just to keep my mind occupied. So it didn't veer off into the darkness, into a, what they call a bad trip, actually like seeing things hallucinating monsters and you know, stuff like that. So I pictured a blackboard. This really happened. So I'm lying in bed and I'm trying to go to sleep. And I pictured a blackboard in my head. And I swear to God. And I'm just trying, what can I think of to keep my mind busy? And I pictured two times two. Two times two is four. I pictured the two written in chalk and I could see it. I could see the chalk dust. I could see the blackboard. You know, I mean, I, I could just, it was there. It was like I was standing in front of it while I was lying in bed I, as I was imagining it in my head. I mean, and it stayed there. And I saw the two. I wrote a two, another two times, two times two, four. And then I went over here and I wrote four times four, 16. And I could still see the two, you know, like I wrote, actually wrote it, but I was picturing this in my head. And it stayed there. And then I went to 16 times 16, 144. And I went 144 times 144. Now, I'm just picturing this laying in the dark in my bed. And uh, I think it's 20,000 something. You know, and it, you have to carry those numbers down. You know, you know, in order to do that multiplication, 144 times 144, you have to go four times four is 16. Put the six down. You know, you have to carry all the numbers down. And... I was visualizing all these numbers and they stayed there. Like I, I was picturing this in my head and I went to 20,000, whatever it is. I couldn't even tell you now. I could, I could never do this before and I'll never be able to do it again. And I remember at that point, I knew something weird, weird was happening. And I got up, I turned the light on in my bedroom and there was a marker on my desk and I got a piece of paper and I wrote down the number. 20,000, whatever it is, 144 times 144, and I wrote it down. I put it on my desk, and I went back, turned the light off, lay back in bed. And then I, I started doing it more. 20,500, whatever, times 20,500, whatever. And I, I think I, I, I eventually kind of dozed off or fell asleep. But I got up the next morning, and I... I looked at that piece of paper and I had cal we had calculators back then, not, not cell phones or anything. And I, I used my calculator to do it out and it was right. You know, this is, you know, to, to, to see those numbers, to do that long multiplication in my head and say, I remember seeing those numbers. It was amazing. You know, this is, this, that is the power of this drug. That's something I, I could never do before. And it happened. I know it happened. It sounds crazy telling you guys this, but there's a, a warning that goes along with this that just as strongly as I saw those numbers, you could see other things too. And you could have what they call a bad trip. And those things don't go away either. I remember later, I wouldn't, I never took the stuff again. And a girl took it with me, took it in front of me at a party later. And she had what they call a bad trip. And I was, t I knew what she was seeing, I could imagine. So I laid down with her and tried to calm her down. And I stayed with her all night. At one point, she started pulling her hair out. She was just freaking out. And she eventually calmed down by dawn, and she fell asleep. And in the morning, I looked. It was on a, a fold-out couch, and there were pieces of hair. And there was actually skin from the scalp that she pulled out of her hair, out of her head. Uh, I mean, that's how terrified this, this person was from this bad trip. Um... That night, I remember walking, that night we were tripping, I remember walking up to my house and it didn't look like my house. And so I walked back down and I looked at the street sign and I couldn't read the, I couldn't make, it's, I lived on Sunny Lane. I knew I lived on Sunny Lane, but the sign didn't say Sunny Lane. It looked like Chinese letters. And I, I looked closer, I looked, you know, right and I'm like, how could this be? How, who changed the sign? And I remember looking at the pavement and you know how there's little stones in pavement? Now they mix the tar and the stones. And I could see letters spelled out. 
with the stones, the little stones spelled out letters, you know, and I, I got on my hands and knees and I'm looking at the ground, at the road, and I'm like, those, those letters are actually there. You know, I could put my finger on each stone and I could see, the, you know, they spelled out these words, the stones in the pavement spelled out words. I don't remember what the words were, but there was just, it was just an infinite amount of words going down the road, spelled out in stones. Um, and it's scary, man, it, you know, because this, this, this is the realest thing. You, when you're seeing this, it's real. It's realer than you've ever seen before. It's terrifying. Um, I would never take this drug again. Never. It took me days, and I was young. I was 17 or 18 years old. I would never, ever take this drug again. Um, it makes you realize what the human mind is capable of. It's more than just a gray matter and an organ in your head. Uh, there's so much more up there that we don't use. You know, the stuff I saw and the stuff I did that day, uh, they're amazing, but it's also terrifying because it could go the other way. You know, just how I used it to multiply numbers, it could go the other way. And you could picture god awful things in your head. And once there's another thing too. Back then, when we'd go to the if you go to the hospital on a bad trip, they couldn't do anything. They had just had to let the drug wear off. Uh, they could give you some kind of relaxing or something. You had to ride that bad trip out for hours, twelve hours, twenty hours in this personal hell of seeing monsters. Uh, it's it's something I would never do again. Never do again. I, now that I'm clean and sober, I have so much more respect for my body, my mind, and my soul. And I know I have a soul. You know, I know because I lost it. And now I know I have it back. And I know it sounds corny, but it's the truth. Recovery is possible. Um, clean and sober. Have a good Thursday.